Hello. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a while since I last made a video. Um, if you're new here, hello, welcome, my name's Harry, and in 2016 I challenged myself to make at least one YouTube video every single year. Um, I guess until I stop. It's currently quarter to two on the 30th of December 2021, and I've not actually made a video yet. Hence, I'm making this. So for those of you that do want to sort of quick catch up on my life, uh, I got a job, I stopped the podcast, I moved to London, uh, I lost a bit of weight, then I put on quite a bit of weight, and now I'm losing a little bit more weight again, and that's the end of the year, and I'm moving again next year. So, yeah, that's my life caught up. For those of you that are wondering what this is all about, for the last two years on my private Instagram story, I've been doing my top 10 songs of 2019 and 2020, and I thought, well, considering I haven't actually made a video this year, why not try and, you know, make a YouTube video for my top 10 songs of 2021? Yeah. So, some ground rules. Firstly, it's my list, so if you don't like it... Okay. And secondly, uh, the songs don't necessarily have to have come out this year. I could have just discovered it this year. So some of these songs were released in 2021. Others were released, you know, many, many years ago. I guess that just makes it makes it fun. Uh, as again, it's my rules. So, yeah. So without further ado, uh, let's get into number 10. So number 10 to start off the list is actually from a Netflix special. It's from Bo Burnham's comedy special, Inside. This is a surprising one to be included, um, but I think the time in which Inside came out and the topics it discusses is definitely, I'd say, a time capsule into what it was like living in 2020. I think if I have kids in the future and they ask me, what was it like living? I'm just I'm just going to show them that special. Um, it <laughs> it was a weird experience, especially as it was billed as a comedy special, and a lot of introspection was in those songs and, and sketches. It was definitely a look back into what it was like living in that first lockdown. Um, I think Bo Burnham started to say at the start, you know, this is... I'm gonna do this, you know. We, we're all stuck inside. Let's let's make something out of it. I think he made one of the one of the best films I've seen in the last year, um, if not the best. Bo actually starts this song uh, by apologising for not being very good at guitar or singing um, after having made about twenty songs throughout the special, which he showcased both of these talents. Although this one is a lot sort of slower and calmer, um, and I think the backdrop for it is uh, it's sort of like he sat. He's, he's projected an image of the woods on there to make it look like he's sat sort of by a campfire. And that's sort of the general vibe this song gives off. Now, I'm by no means a music critic uh, or anyone, you know, like Anthony Fantano. I'm not trying to be like that. Uh, I just wanted to make this list about songs I like. And I think this sort of introspective look into sort of how the world currently is and how no one seems to give a shit about it, I think hit very deep with me. And I think that's why I've kept it on this list. This song definitely struck a chord with me uh, on the first watch and also on multiple re-listens. It's this and a handful of others are ones that I actually put into my playlist and have listened to several times. I think the topics it discusses is definitely a a real sort of wider look, you know, eye-opening look on, on what is actually going on at the moment, and I highly recommend anyone to go and listen to it. Now, moving on to number nine, we have Industry Baby by Lil Nas X. Now, when Old Town Road came out in 2019, I was among the many, many people that just thought this was a flash-in-the-pan sort of single song, like, oh, well done, you know, one-hit wonder by Lil Nas X. Little did we know that we were actually witnessing the start of a marketing masterclass from Lil Nas X. Industry Baby was definitely more of an event than a song, uh, following the uh, backlash after the release of Montero and then following the court case as well from Nike with the shoes he was trying to release. Instead of just complying with you know the demands of Nike and um, you know going along with the court case proceedings, Lil Nas X decided to instead create an absolute fucking banger with this song. I definitely feel that Industry Baby stands alone on itself, you know, uh, even if you take away the actual backstory and the music video from this, and the powerful, almost orchestral trumpet sounds and heavy, loud backing track with this just keeps the keeps the energy high and just is a real feel good fun song. I've definitely listened to this in the gym to, uh, and also whenever I just want to have a you know a pick me up from this because it's just a fantastic fantastic song. Along with this and Montero being released this year, I cannot wait to see what's next in store with Mr. Nas X. I think the best way to introduce this song is how little I know about the band. I found out about this song from a tweet making fun of Spotify Wrapped. Number 8 is Ah by Teen Jesus and the Gene Teasers. I don't actually know anything about this band other than they released this song and it's one of the best names for a song I've ever heard. Despite having a really out there title, I think it's actually the controlled aggression in this song that makes me love it so much. The vocals and the instrumental work so well together to create a controlled yet aggressive sound uh, that is reminiscent of punk bands from the 70s and 80s. Every time I listen to this song it makes me smile and I really wish that you can go and listen to it as well. Thank you Teen Jesus and the Gene Teasers. Number 7 on this list is Ziti 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 Ubuwani. Ziti Ubuwani. Ubu,
Number seven on this list is Zitty Ubuwani by Manaskin. What is it with Eurovision recently and making absolute bangers? This song I won't even attempt to repronounce again is actually by the Italian band Manaskin and won this year's Eurovision. The first thing from this is that it's nothing like any other Eurovision song I've heard in the last 10 years. With a heavy focus on the instruments that compile a classic rock band with guitar, vocals, bass and drums, this is a departure from the more poppy sound we've come to expect from Eurovision in the past. The song is also in Italian so I actually have no idea what they're singing about but the passion that they have with this is incredible and I absolutely adore the band around it as well. Manaskin is probably the most left of field band I've discovered this year, but I'm so happy I did, and I can't wait to see what comes from them next year. Number six on this list is Father and Son by Cat Stevens. So this is a bit different from the other songs on this list, considering it wasn't actually released in 2021, and it's actually a much slower, more heartfelt song that is far older than I am. Technically, I'm actually breaking the rules of this one, but fuck it, it's my list. Marvel fans might actually recognise this song, as it is the track that played at Yondu's funeral in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and that's where I first heard it, but this year was the first time I was able to actually sit down and listen to it. The song is clearly written from the perspective of a father saying goodbye to his son as he passes away, and it's a truly beautiful look into the human condition. This song has made me cry multiple times when listening to it, and I must admit I did bump it up the list when I re-listened to it for this. Ellie Dixon was a small artist I had the pleasure of interviewing on my podcast last year, and she has absolutely exploded in popularity in the last 12 months. I continue to follow Ellie's work into this year, having even hosted the launch party for her music video for Green Green Grass, another 2021 release. I even had the pleasure of going to see her at her first headline gig, so of course I was going to include one of her songs in here. Suckle was released in February this year to clearly poke fun at the romantic songs released around Valentine's Day. The vocals come from the perspective of someone who is a real sucker for romance but never seems to find the right person. However, it's the instrumentals here that really take centre stage. The fact that this was produced in her bedroom over lockdown make the unique vocals and punchy instrumentals even more impressive. The guitar, bass and piano are really what sells this track for me and I fully expect to have another Ellie Dixon track on this list next year. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I moved down to London from Lincolnshire this year and for majority of 2021 I was 23 years old, so I've never had a song resonate with me so much as Ledley's 23. The song explores the time in your early 20s when society expects so much of you but you're still figuring your own shit out and sometimes you can feel nothing but hopeless. I fully expect to be listening to this song well into my late 20s as well as I'm still figuring things out, but it's clear to see why this song hit me so hard this year in particular. I really implore anyone who is in their 20s to go and listen to this song and I challenge you not to feel the same way I did. Coming in at number 3, it's Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. I'm fully aware of how this song choice makes me look like a basic teenage white girl, but I'm not ashamed to say how much I love this song and Olivia Rodrigo's wider album released this year. Driver's License manages to take the breakup of a teenage girl and make this 24-year-old man feel like it's the worst thing that could happen to anyone ever, and for that I applaud Olivia Rodrigo and her team. Rodrigo, along with Billie Eilish and others, is in this new generation of younger artists that have amazing careers ahead of them, and I cannot wait to see what comes next for them. 2021 really gave us a lot, with political scandals, new variants of a certain virus, and many other terrible things. It also gave us one shimmering ray of hope and belief that is season 2 of Apple TV Plus's Ted Lasso. I don't want to drop too many spoilers in case people haven't seen it, but I really, really encourage you to go and watch this series. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll smile more than any show in recent memory. She's a Rainbow by the Rolling Stones features heavily in one episode of season two, and I must admit it's the first time I'd actually heard this beautiful track. As a departure from their usual music, this song relies heavily on a single piano melody for the majority of the song. The upbeat nature and joyous vocals are what have made this song feature so heavily in my rotation this year, and much like Ted Lasso, it makes me smile a lot. Please go and listen to it, and please go and watch Ted Lasso as well. Before we get to number one, I want to do some honourable mentions. This year has been especially tough for me to try and narrow down my top ten songs, um, and I just had so many that I wanted to put in there, but I just couldn't find a place, um, and then they've been edged out. So this is just the honourable mentions in no particular order. There's Smoking Out the Window by Bruno Mars and Addison Pack. Elephant by Tame Impala. Thank You God by Tim Minchin, and pretty much anything Tim Minchin has done. Was uns Heimacht. Uh, I'm sorry about the pronunciation of that, but it's a song by the German band Province. Dover Beach by Baby Queen. Space Song by Beach House. Stay High, Childish Gambino's version by Childish Gambino and Brittany Howard. Green Tambourine by the Lemon Pipers, Fly As Me by Bruno Mars and Addison Pack, and British Bombs by Declan McKenna. As I mentioned earlier, this list has been incredibly difficult for me to make, um, and I've moved songs around so much, you know, like uh, some of them moved up, some of them moved down, but there is one that has always remained as my number one song. This is actually the first time since I started doing this that I've had two songs by the same artist on here, and I think it's fitting that he was 10th and 1st to bookend it. All Eyes On Me is one of the last songs in Bo Burnham's special Inside, and it hasn't actually left me since the first time I heard it. From the outset, the song has a feeling of an incredibly powerful performance with loud bassy synths and crowd noise accompanying it, building up to the vocals. The mixing of the song gives an almost ghostly, ethereal feel to Bo's delivery, and really completes the song as a special crescendo with this release that he that he has put his heart and soul into the project over the last year. As I said at the start of this, please go and watch Bo Burnham's Inside. It's one of the most unique viewing experiences I've ever had, and I wish I could go back to the first time I ever watched it. So that concludes my top 10 songs of the year. I'm now going to do sort of my top 5 albums as well, but there's no real order to this. These are just um, a mix of albums I've listened to over the year, and I just think as a whole, uh, are a real fantastic piece of art. So in no particular order, I have uh, 30 by Adele, which is just a 
fantastic comeback uh, after several years of you know not releasing any music. Um, and I think it's just it just shows that she has an impeccable voice that I don't think can be challenged by anyone at the moment. And I, I think the music world has sorely, sorely missed her. Next up, we have Red Taylor's version uh, by Taylor Swift. Uh, this is actually a kind of weird experience. For me. So I was actually a Taylor hater um, as a kid because my sister really liked them. And uh, I was like 13 years old, 14 years old. And I'm like, oh, stupid poppy music. I like this. No. So actually Taylor releasing her versions of these albums has given me sort of like a, a way of just actually kind of listening to it for the first time. So it's a weird experience just actually enjoying these songs for the songs they are and not having a, like an annoying pretense that I had as a kid not wanting to listen to these. We also have Sour uh, which is Olivia Rodrigo's album. Um, obviously Driver's License is on here but I could have picked any any song from this album. It was a fantastic debut album by a really young artist uh, and I think Good For You in particular, Brutal and Jealousy Jealousy are um, songs that I absolutely adore um, from that album in particular. And almost completing this list uh, is actually Inside open brackets, the songs, close brackets, um, by Bo Burnham. Again, as I said, the special itself is, is amazing, but if you haven't got time to, like, I guess, sit down and watch it, please just listen to the songs, because the songs are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And any one of them could have been on this list as well. So actually, I'm breaking my rules again with this list, um, because I do actually have an album of the year, and that's An Evening with Silk Sonic by Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack, and various other artists that collaborated on it. Um, the reason I didn't put a sort of any, like a particular song in the top 10, but I had a couple in the honorable mentions, is because the actual product as a whole is one of the... It, I, I couldn't put the whole album on this on the list. Um, just from start to finish, it's fantastic. You know, you, you could just sit down um, and listen to it. I actually listened to it whilst writing um, the list and my notes for this, um, this year. So, again, that's probably one of the best things I've listened to this year. Actually, no, that's the best thing I've listened to this year. <laughs> so that is it. Um, thank you very much for watching me ramble on. Um, I've actually been recording this for about 50 minutes because I keep on messing up and it's been a while since I've made a video. I do hope that my video next year is going to be a bit shorter, um, or at least shorter to film. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be next year, but I will definitely not wait until the 30th of December to start it. Um, all I have to do is just wish you a great 2022, and if you're watching this, I guess, in 2025, hello, why are you, why are you watching... Go and go, go and like drive your flying car somewhere. Anyway, I uh, hope you have a lovely year, um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.